defendant repeatedly made false statements on New York business records. He also caused others to make false statements. The defendant claimed that he was paying Michael Cohen for legal services performed in 2017. This simply was not true. And it was a false statement that the defendant made month after month in 2017. April, May, June, and so on through the rest of the year. For nine straight months, the defendant held documents in his hand containing this key lie. Why did Donald Trump repeatedly make these false statements? The evidence will show that he did so to cover up crimes relating to the 2016 election. At its core, this case today is one with allegations like so many of our white collar cases. Allegations that someone lied again and again to protect their interests and evade the laws to which we are all held accountable. I mean, Sue, I have read everything you've written about the business records, about the falsification of business records. I've read about all the people who have, I mean, Weisselberg goes to Rikers right. over this. I mean, these are, again, I, I'm just struck by the way Alvin Bragg says, we do this all the time. This is sort of the bread and butter of white collar prosecutions. Trump did it from the Oval Office because he's, he's naming those payments in 17. He's in the Oval Office falsifying business records. Right. I think we have a pattern here. <laughs> Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> I, I think judge after judge, and, and you're seeing this to one degree or another, I don't want to say that all of them are cut equally here, but you're seeing them want to give due process mm -hmm. and want to go through it because they don't want to be accused of not giving Donald Trump you know, a fair shake. And it has led to all of these delays and in one form or another, some are much larger than others. And it, it was refreshing to see the judge today. He's ready to move forward. He saw through this and he's now marching towards jury selection on April 15th. And if you think about what Trump is accused of doing, it, it's not, it, it really, you know, I get so, um, I feel like there's this temptation to lump all of them together and all the alleged conduct together. This is so different. This is the big lie about who he is, about who he was. And the, the, the notion that, that he lied about his wealth, that he lied about his sex life, that he lied about his vulnerabilities going into the 2016 election, get to the very heart of, of whether people would have made the same choice if they'd known this information. Which is why Alvin Bragg would characterize this <clears throat> as the state election interference case. You know, Nicole, when we talk about this case having a novel theory of law, in some respects it is novel, right? Yes, it is the bread and butter of the DA's office to charge people with the falsification of business records all the time. Yes, there is a statute that allows you to go after people for falsifying business records in aid of a felony. And the one that they chose here is somewhat unusual. But I guess what I would posit back at people is, did you ever think that someone who was sexually assaulted by a former president almost 30 years ago would sue that person for defamation? Isn't that well, in they'd and have of to. Right, but isn't that in and of itself novel as well, right. that the vehicle by which E. Jean Carroll gets her measure of justice is not through the criminal justice system, which is where many victims of sexual assault and rape get their justice, but by suing him for defamation, because, to your point, it is a lie at the core of who this person was and is. The cases we're dealing with now in New York are principally about who Donald Trump was before he was president. The cases that are yet to come are about the type of person he transmogrified into, right. having been that person all along, as the president of the United States. Let's deal with, I was going to say elephant in the room, but we're going to do that in the next block. Let's deal with the other <laughs> elephant in the room. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, now I've only got uh, Ronald McDaniel's name in my brain, but Michael Cohen. I mean, there's a scene in Lego Batman where the Joker <laughs> is, is sailing away and, and he says, you know, you, you're nothing without me. I mean, this whole symbiotic relationship started with love has ended up with deep, deep hatred between Michael Cohen and Trump is, is, is again, just another thread, another subplot. But clearly, clearly, Michael Cohen triggers the you-know-what out of Donald Trump. No doubt about it. And his cross-examination is going to be the dramatic centerpiece of the trial. And remember, he's an adjudicated perjurer, as they'll try to say 26 times until Merchan stops them. But look, <laughs> Trump 
not, you know, does all these things. At the time, it was a new pattern for us. We didn't know. Maybe that's why he was able to just skate by and get to the presidency. But he also signs the check to Michael Cohen when the hubbub first ensues. Remember him on the plane saying, whatever Michael Cohen says, he's my lawyer. He, Michael Cohen has a real sort of um, cr credible basis, at least, to testify from. But the particulars are going to be very strongly contested. That's really the most that, that they can try to do short of Trump testifying, which, as I say, I think is unlikely. So there, there are papers. There are, there are things that you can point to. It's not just a Michael Cohen right. case, but he's really important, and they are preparing him at length over days and days and days for what will be, for sure, a bruising cross-examination. And what's so interesting about Michael Cohen, David Jolly, is that <clears throat> everything about Michael Cohen that they will throw at Michael Cohen as an attack is what Michael Cohen did in service of Donald Trump. Yeah, that's right. The lie before Congress was a lie that Michael Cohen says he was instructed to tell. And a jury will have to decide, yeah. right, and sort all that out on, on the credibility side. But everything they're going to attack him with is something that Michael Cohen went and served prison time for and, again, didn't have the alleged sex at the point. Yeah, he, he was doing it for the boss man is basically what he will say. Yeah. And I think where he provides a, such a dangerous witness um, against or dangerous testimony against Donald Trump is there's nothing more you can take from Michael Cohen. Correct. He, he's that person who has had everything taken from him. So there's not a charge he hasn't been hit with. There's not a credibility hit he hasn't absorbed. And so I, I think there's an opportunity probably for the jury to see him as just being raw and honest. And this is what I'm here to tell you. I think the interesting dynamic where this case will capture the imagination of the American people. Yes, around the facts of Stormy Daniels and business fraud. But <clears throat> We will very likely now see, as a result of this case, either an acquittal or a conviction of Donald Trump before the election. That is the one dynamic we have not seen politically. Everything else does seem to be baked in. But we've not seen the American reaction to an acquittal or to a conviction. And what does that look like? And should there be a conviction? This then tees up for the American people that fundamental question for November of Donald Trump is running for his own absolution. The remarkable thing is there's not much he can do about it in mm -hmm. this matter. But nonetheless, that is what will be framed in the American people's mind. Well, hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.